Hello friends, my name is Real Emil and welcome back to some more Forza Top Gear laps. Today we are doing the Cars of Fast and Furious. Now if you bought the Ultimate Edition or the Deluxe version of Forza Motorsport 6, you will get access to the Fast and Furious DLC pack and that has a bunch of famous cars from the films. Uh, there's 10 cars in the pack, however today we'll be throwing 7 round. I am excluding the Corvette C2, the Gurkha and the Raid Dodge Charger. Uh, the Gurkha will be thrown around at some point, but the other two didn't really seem very interesting because I sort of ignored those two. Anyway, onto the first car, and it's the Mitsubishi Eclipse GS from the first Fast and Furious film. 355 horsepower, 3,199 pounds of weight. I believe this is the first car we ever see in the Fast and Furious film franchise, unless maybe them black Civics at the start as well. They should have been in this pack, but unfortunately they're not. Uh, so yeah, anyway, this is Brian's car, and the Eclipse, I was expecting this car to be hideously horrible. It has 355 horsepower, however it's front wheel drive. And uh, normally what this would mean is chronic understeer, crash, wall, death, uh, through understeer. The Eclipse, however, is a very, very nice handling front wheel drive car. This is actually one of the best front wheel drive cars I've ever driven. Uh, the smoke pouring off it kind of gives you an indication how much grip this thing has. Because even with the smoke pouring off the side, this thing handles beautifully. There's virtually no understeer in this car, which was really, really impressive. The straight line speed wasn't too good. I don't know what it is about these cars. Whenever they didn't have much horsepower, or at least compared to some of the others, they didn't seem particularly fast. Uh, and the Eclipse, yeah, it didn't feel very fast. But, yeah, it was a very nice handling front-wheel drive car. It'd be interesting to see how this compares in the future to other front-wheel drive cars, considering they don't usually do too well around this track. Next up, we have the Ford Escort Mark 1 RS 1600. This is from Fast and Furious 6. I believe this is one of the cars Brian uses. And it has 245 horsepower, 1,731 pounds of weight. Now, when I looked at the statistics of this car, I had high hopes. 245 horsepower, 1,731 pounds. That isn't actually too much off the statistics of the BAC Mono that's currently leading our board. However, the Escort does have a bit of an issue. While it may have 245 horsepower and may weigh almost nothing, this car seems to have wobbly rally suspension. I, I know it looks like a rally car. I don't think in the connotations of the film this was ever actually used off-road. I'm pretty sure this is from the freeway scene uh, when they've got to take out the tank. I'm not sure. I haven't seen Fast and Furious 6 in a while. Um, but yeah, the, the rally suspension really did upset this car. Another thing as well is the brakes weren't too good. Um, I'm assuming they were upgraded at some point, because if you didn't upgrade the suspension... Oh, you can see it sliding through there. Uh, if you didn't upgrade the suspension and the brakes on this thing, then I don't know what the hell they're doing. They're not very good tuners. Um, yeah, the Escort also had a tendency to go sideways. It wasn't too bad there. The suspension was the worst thing about this car. Not quite as easy as to drive as I was expecting. That was the biggest disappointment of the day. Going from the biggest disappointment to the biggest surprise, this is the Dodge Charger Daytona, again from Fast and Furious 6. This is Dom's car he uses in one of the street races. 675 horsepower, 3,131 pounds. The Daytona, I was expecting this thing to be an absolute handful. It's a muscle car, which normally doesn't mean very good things. It's also from the 70s. I had just driven the Escort and I was assuming this had, would have a similar thing where they hadn't bothered upgrading anything on it. I was so wrong about this car. It is, honestly, this is a fantastic handling car. This is a really, really nice car. I love this thing. Uh, it's probably the best looking car here today. I do really like the Daytona. And it was... Probably the best handling as well. It really is a damn good handling vehicle. No understeer, no oversteer. This thing is planted to the floor. No issues in it whatsoever. The, yeah, Daytona is a fantastic car. I do recommend, of all the cars here today, this is the one I definitely recommend you give a go because the Daytona is just superb. <laughs> I loved driving the Daytona around here. Really good car. A-Class, I believe this one is, 675 PI, so it's getting close to supercars and stuff, so it'll be interesting to see how that fares compared to the supercars when they start going around. Next up, we have Suki's Honda S2000. This is from Too Fast, Too Furious. She uses this in the opening race, I believe. 330 horsepower, 2,813 pounds. Interestingly as well, this is the only one of these cars that doesn't have the correct design on it. 
I don't know, maybe the design was copyrighted or something, I don't know. Anyway, uh, the S2000. Now, we had an S2000 go around in Season 2. It was a really, really nice handling car, but wasn't particularly quick. This S2000 is sublime handling. I again, this is like... This might handle a bit better than Daytona, of course, I was kind of expecting this car to a little bit. I was expecting it to be more sliding, considering, of course, Fast and Furious films, there's a lot of sideways action in them. Uh, the S2000 is really bloody planted, though. I really, really like this car, despite its stupid, stupid body kit. And the fact that the Sparco steering wheel actually covers the rev counter, um, so it has to use a different rev counter. Yeah, the S2000 was superb. Not too much in the way of horsepower, again, this is actually less powerful than the Eclipse, so it didn't quite have uh, the straight line speed of some of its other contemporaries. But yeah, the S2000 was a really, really good handling car, again, another one I recommend you go and check out. Next up we have the Nissan 350Z, this is from Tokyo Drift, this is DK's car, I actually watched Tokyo Drift yesterday, I believe, so I do kind of know what I'm on about on that one. 486 horsepower, 3,310 pounds. Now, in the film Tokyo Drift, there's a lot of drifting, and I was really dreading this car because I thought this would be sideways everywhere. Uh, it can get sideways fairly easily, but it's not that bad, actually, the 350Z. Um, it looks... I can't tell if it looks cool or stupid. Uh, it's also got a one-sided decal. I don't remember it being one-sided in, in the actual film, but there you go. Um, yeah, the 350Z wasn't uh, too bad. I personally would like a bit more rear end grip, however, every car I have ever driven ever, I would like more rear end grip, so that's not too much of an issue. This car does handle a lot better as expecting it to. Uh, straight line speed was fairly decent on this as well, 486 horsepower is quite a lot uh, in one of these cars. And yeah, the 350Z wasn't bad. <laughs> uh, again, I think this car's A Class 630Pi, I believe, on this one. Uh, I don't really display the PIs, I probably should start doing it. Um, but yeah, the 350Z wasn't too bad. Next up, we have Brian's Toyota Supra. This is, again is from the first Fast and Furious film. This is the one everyone starts going, oh my god, 2JZ. Around 770 horsepower, 3,329 pounds. 770 horsepower in a Toyota Supra. There's only one way that could end, and that's absolutely atrociously. And indeed, this car is probably the most difficult thing to drive here today, save for maybe the Escort. Uh, the actual issue with the Supra isn't the handling, because the handling's fairly alright on this. It does go sideways more than the 350Z. In fact, it might be the most sideways car of the day, possibly. Um, yeah, so, I mean, the Supra even handled pretty decently, which is something I wasn't expecting to say. All these cars actually handled really well, better than most supercars. <laughs> which is, yeah, something I wasn't expecting to say. The big issue with the Supra is the turbos, because this thing has huge, dynamous turbos on it. It's insane. Basically, as soon as you hit 4,500 revs, the revs instantly jump up to about 8,000 and it redlines. And this happens to about 4th gear. Um, so yeah, the Supra can be a bit weird with the turbo boost, but other than that, pretty decent car. It's got a huge wing on it as well, which makes it fantastic. And finally, we have probably the most famous of the Fast and Furious cars. This is the Nissan Skyline R34 from Too Fast, Too Furious. 505 horsepower, 3,439 pounds. This is Brian's car. Again, he uses it in the first race. It's also featured in the prelude to Too Fast, Too Furious, where they buy it from a dealership and he ends up restoring it and stuff. Uh, yeah, this is the most famous car from Fast and Furious, so I'm pleased to say I'm not going to be lynched by Skyline fans, because this thing handles pretty decently. I will say getting it off the line's a little bit interesting. Uh, it kind of has the same issue as the Subaru Impreza and Lancia's do. Uh, luckily this car actually has a turbo gauge in it, which is quite useful. I have actually found out as long as you can keep boost in the turbos, as soon as you launch off you'll be fine. Uh, so basically don't hit the throttle until the last second, and then you can sort of charge the turbos up, and this car will be away. Uh, other than that, four-wheel drive Skyline is going to handle pretty well. It does. <laughs> it's, it's a really nice handling car, this. Uh, A690 Pi as well, so yeah, pretty good car, that's what I've got to say about the Skyline, it's good. I'm not going to get lynched by GTR fans, this is good. Um, 
because believe me, there's been a couple of times in the past where I believe they've probably wanted to do that to me. Anyway, onto the times, and the Skyline is actually the fastest car of the day, 117.483, which is pretty good. Beats the Daytona by a little bit, 117.841 for the Daytona, which is a damn good time. Supra, despite being the highest PI car here, it was in the turbos and the handling let it down a little bit. 118.594, Nissan 350Z beats an Infinity L Rouge, which is quite good, 119.669. And the Suki X2000, 120.890, beats a Ford Mustang. I wasn't actually expecting that S2000 to be that quick. I'm really surprised. I wish it would beat the Tesla, um, to be honest with you, because I think that could be quite interesting. But, nope, it did pretty decent. And finally, the other two cars, Eclipse, 124.231. Uh, which was pretty good, especially for a front-wheel drive car, and the Escort, the suspension let it down, 124.861, still beats an Evo 8 by a whole second then, so that's pretty good. So there you go, the Fast and Furious cars handle really, really, really well, which is something I wasn't expecting, they're good track cars, try them out. Anyway, that is going to be it for today's episode, guys, I want to thank you all very much for watching. Next week, uh, I'm not too sure what we're going to be doing. Uh, also, there's been two episodes this week that probably won't keep up for long. But anyway, I want to thank you all very much for watching. My name has been The Real Emil. Until next time, farewell.